So here's a goat bedded down at 800 yards. Uh, I was holding 1.5 MOA to the left. Uh, it was a quartering on wind, so it wasn't a full value, but it was uh, enough to obviously make a difference, and I estimated it to be five mile per hour. Oh, yeah, it's a shot. Hey everyone, welcome back to Controlled Recoil. This uh, video will be the introduction to a new series that I'll be doing focusing on long range hunting. Now the goal of this series will be to help people who are interested in long range specifically uh, that are either getting into hunting with, with that long range in mind or maybe you're an experienced hunter who just wants to extend their skill and um, rifle capabilities. Okay, So the goal will be um, to have ethical, you know, effective shots at extended ranges but also we want to be able to select the correct equipment and put it together um, effectively and correctly to make sure that we can um, create a platform that we can build on without having to go back later and change things and repurchase scopes and stuff like that because a lot of that stuff can get frustrating and quite expensive so hopefully this will uh, allow you to get um, into a rifle system that is fit for perfect, uh, purpose and uh, it also allows you to sort of grow into that system and not uh, not have to change things later so it'll, it'll give you the confidence and you know it'll, it'll save a lot of money hopefully and frustration and just make it a more enjoyable experience okay so that's the goal of the series now to give it some context i'll be limiting the range okay or the, the context of what we're talking about will be limiting to 500 meters for now now the reason why i chose that uh, the, the range is because this is where i feel most factory uh quality factory off the shelf rifles um, and, and ammunition is this is about where that combination is effective to in my opinion after 500 meters this is where you really want to be you know you're getting into more specialized stuff you're getting into reloading and things like that so for now um, especially with you know more most people that are starting out are not going to be uh, reloading yet and things like that we can do a series on more advanced stuff later if there's enough interest in this but for now um, there's a lot to cover off I realize we will be you know covering old ground for a lot of people so i do apologize but as we all know we have to start at the start to get a good grounding and understanding of what we're doing so yeah i do apologize if we cover an old ground there will be hunting content coming out um, in amongst all this as well so you don't have to listen to me nerd out about ballistics um, the entire time so yeah this will probably be close to 13 videos on this i think at an estimate so there's, there's a lot to cover off and we will get into what we're doing now. So this series, uh, we're going to start with what equipment you'll need and the accuracy requirements that we're looking for to make ethical shots, okay? And we'll talk a bit about safety as well and when not to take a shot because that's important. So there'll be a large focus um, on maintaining good ethics throughout this uh the series and attention to detail and obviously discipline which is really important that um, we, we remember it's up to the hunter to have the discipline to turn down bad shots and be realistic with their capabilities not everyone is going to be able to just shoot to 500 meters um, accurately not all the gear is going to be capable of that okay so that's a maximum range that we're talking about in this series as a basic um, you know a sort of a beginners series but not everyone's going to be able to do that. So make sure, you know, we stick to our ethical hunting ranges to the individual. And uh, that, that's going to be basically tested during training. And that's how you're going to find, you know, what distance works for you through practice and knowing your limitations. So we're going to talk about how to correctly set up that required equipment, considering the operation of the features on this equipment 
and any attachments you might use, okay? So whether you're using a trigger cam or some sort of, um, you know, clip-on attachments, those sorts of things, this is all stuff that's worth considering when you're first setting up your scope. We're also gonna talk about different um, expansion rates of different materials, so your mounting systems, but also things like carbon barrels and stuff like that, we're touching on that. Obviously, this is at the beginning where we're selecting equipment. And then, so moving on to the scope features that are essential for long range accuracy, including understanding the different units of angular measurement, so that's MOA or MRAD, so miller radians or minute of angle. And yeah, we'll go through what they are and how to use them correctly. And then we'll move on to fitting the rifle system to the shooter to enable correct body and optical positioning. We'll do a basic breakdown of internal ballistics and the order of events that happen after the trigger is squeezed. This will include understanding harmonic vibrations caused by the transfer of energy when the rifle is fired. Okay, and this is going to have a you know an effect on depending on the different types of surfaces you're shooting off, whether it's a hard surface or um, you know a backpack or something like that. Ball conditioning and cleaning. So maintaining consistency to ensure predictable velocities and first round accuracy. Obviously that cold bore shot is the most important in a hunting scenario. Understanding external ballistics and the effects on consistency and accuracy at longer ranges. How to read wind, um, the speed of it, and how to average out different winds if there are multiple winds from different directions. And also talking about you know how our spin drift is affected differently from different winds at different directions. Okay, so obviously we have a bullet that's spinning. Usually it's a right hand twist in most rifles, so that's clockwise. And because that bullet is spinning in a right hand direction, that uh, the different winds from different angles affect that um, in different ways. It's only a small amount, but it does make a difference. So we'll talk about that as well. Talk about how to input the correct, uh, correct data and create a firing solution. So taking into consideration your velocities, all your atmospheric conditions and things like that, and how to fine tune and true that data of the firing solution to the rifle system to validate the accuracy. Now, controlling recoil effectively, this will be in real field conditions using minimal equipment. It will be achieved by utilizing the correct body position to manage recoil consistently uh, in a range of different applications and including angled shots, okay? So that's really important. The angled shots are often where issues start happening if it's not done correctly. So this will also cover understanding how the bore axis is affected during the force of recoil, okay? And we'll be able to see quite a bit of this in action using the trigger cam. It's a very, very useful tool and very good for testing these types of applications. Understanding the performance of different types of projectiles and their construction at different ranges. This will include where to aim on the animal and the type of expansion we can expect to maximise effectiveness for ethical um, kills. And then finally, we're gonna talk a bit about spotter shooter communication. Okay, so it's, it's really helpful if you do have a hunting buddy that can spot for you and give you um, help with wind calls and help um, keep ranges up to an animal, say if it's grazing and it's moving, it saves you coming off the rifle system all the time to re-range and recalculate. So yeah, teaming up really helps, but it is quite important that you have good communication that's really clear, and uh, yeah, we'll touch on that as well. So there's a lot to go through. Um, obviously, you know, there's more than one way to shoot a rifle accurately, so this is just what works for me. I'm not telling anyone else how to do it, I'm just showing what works for me and what I've found through my experience, okay? Now, that might change over time if I find better better ways to do it, uh, but for now, this is uh, this is what I will be, you know, what I show is what I'll be using myself. Now, yeah, all of this has come about from all the questions that you guys have asked, and uh, I, it's got to the point where I thought, well, I might as well do a video and just sort of, yeah, show you guys how I do it anyway. It, it works for me, and just remember that the target doesn't lie, okay? The target's the bit that's important. It shows what's working and what isn't. So, yeah, you will see differences in these type of scenarios, uh, comparing it to likes of PRS or other competitive shooting sports. Uh, but just be aware, we are specifically talking about long range hunting. Now, in New Zealand, we uh, often hunt remote places, and we have to 
carry everything there so weight is a you know an important thing to consider and so you'll find a lot of New Zealand hunting and especially long range hunting we're now usually dealing with say a magnum cartridge in a lightweight hunting system because it's simply not practical for us to carry uh, a lot of the equipment you see in some of those other shooting disciplines into the field with us so being able to successfully manage uh, recoil effectively in a lightweight system with a lot of um, a lot of force and recoil impulse uh, that's going to be very important so yeah, there will be some differences you see here and you know some people might think that I'm doing it wrong and that's fine, that's your opinion, but this is what works for me and I'm going to give the reasons why. Now feel free to try this, um, If you know, before you comment saying I'm doing it wrong you might want to give this a go because it might just surprise you the results, okay, like I said I did a lot of testing with the trigger cam and Using the trigger cam, we can actually measure how far we come off target using our reticle when we slow that down. And so you do actually have a reference point to measure how well you're, you know, controlling that bore axis shift during recoil. So uh, this is what I've come up with using that um, system. And it's also very helpful to be able to spot your shots down range. So... Horses for courses, um, like I say, there's plenty of people out there that will know more about this than I do, so if you are one of those people, please feel free to comment as the series goes on and um, you know, drop some information in there that might be helpful for all of us. Um, I know that the goal for me is to always be improving my accuracy of my equipment and my, my own skills, so anything that would help would really appreciate it, um, and I'm sure everyone else will greatly appreciate that too. So yeah. Thanks very much. Uh, I'll put the details of what we cover off in each video um, as we go along. Each of these points that I made will be in a video, so I'll put um, all those bullet points in the in the video description so you don't have to listen to me waffle on. You can quickly access what we covered by just looking in that video description and any other information that I need to add will also be in there. So um, when we start the series, obviously this is just the intro um, telling you what we're gonna cover off. But when we start this series, we the videos will be very concise and sort of in step-by-step, -step, almost instructional type thing um, that you can follow. Obviously, I'll put it in a logical order from getting the equipment all the way through setting it up, etc. So hopefully this um, puts it into a really easy to follow logical order that will um, be helpful to some of you. So yeah, thanks very much. Now, a quick thing before we call it on the video. We have a scope here, a brand new one. So a massive thank you to Anthony Ferguson, who off his own back has donated the scope, okay, to the channel. And we will be giving this away to a lucky winner. There will be more info on this in a future video. So make sure you subscribe. But the cool thing is this is absolutely brand new, this scope. This is the 2 to 16 by 50 Element Optics HDLR in MRAD and we will be giving this away it also comes with the mounts along with a bubble level so everything you need to get started on your long range rifle system and a really good um, good all-round optic you know with that 2 to 16 power uh, to cover all situations so pretty awesome a massive thank you to anthony um yeah it's 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 amazing to have that sort of support for the channel and obviously I'm sure the lucky winner will be absolutely stoked and I thought it was quite fitting obviously for this series um, to have an optic that's very suitable for the exact applications we're talking about so that'll be quite cool. More on that in a future video. Thanks for the support. If you think I've missed anything throw it in the comments and I'll, I'll fit it in and yeah as always guys stay safe out there. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.